Hi, this is uh, another comfy video about uh, making an image from a rough sketch. I have a book cover to do, so I thought I AI would be jolly good at spaceships and planets, but uh, on the planet part, I couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> as soon as you mention planet, it wants to put you on the ground and doesn't want you in space. So the best I could manage was um, to, to put this sketch in and do image to image, which produced this. Which is all right. The spaceship is hopeful, but um, as soon as I try and develop it and um, and get a better planet and etc. and put a few lauras in, you can sort of see my arrangement here, and you can see one of the images there that popped up. Uh, here's the prompt. Everything everything is about being in space, uh, nothing about being on a planet. But the images come out like this. So um, so this video is ended up has ended up as a how to make planets video, which I hope is interesting. But I think the technique uh, I've used is useful in in other ways. I can see other other areas it could be uh, it could be quite useful for. So we'll go off to Comfy and uh, I'll put the workflow up and explain how it operates and what it produces. We are in Comfy and. Um, this is the workflow I came up with. So it starts at the bottom, works up to the top. This is uh, merely a scalar up here, so I probably won't. I won't bother with that. But these two stages are the, uh, and this one especially, are the are the ones that make the planet happen. So we'll make these uh, to never and concentrate on this because this is the uh, this is the only bit that actually uh, that the video is about really and and it's quite straight straightforward what i want to do is to make a uh, image to image uh, that because that seems to work best i tried um a control net depth maps uh, etc uh, and they they all produce pretty horrible results uh, pretty poor quality. It's very hard to get the quality, uh, and they were quite erratic as well. So what I made is a planet mixer, and I was in, <laughs> realized was that for a three D rendering there are large numbers of uh, texture sphere, and I thought to myself, well these are these are sort of ideal as proto planets. So I uh, made a set of images like these that all the planet is always in the same place, etc but with all different textures. So if I load another one, let's load an icy one. So there's a sort of icy planet there, and we might have a, another one that fitted uh, cold, uh, cold moon. We could have a moon maybe, okay. So we've got a moon and we got this sort of uh, fractally icy stuff. So what I've done is make nodes to adjust and blend these two together, which are very simple. So I can adjust the temperature, the gamma and the saturation, uh, which is important when you see the image mixed. And then I needed to put the stars in. If I have the stars in this image, it doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, and I didn't want to put stars behind every image. So I made a just a star map and I blended that to lighten. So it, it always lightens the image. And then I needed to put the the you know the 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 shadow on the planet and have it adjustable so i made a, a shadow map here which just darkens that side of the planet i could make that in any shape i could make a, a more of a crescent one or a flat one i i could remake i have several of those made if i wanted to i would just make these in photoshop and then i blend all of that together here so this is the blend mode this is the blend for the stars this is the blend uh set on multiply for, for this so so that it only darkens and the white doesn't affect anything and then finally i have a color tint uh, which is just to make is is going quite low i just want to make a very fine adjustments to hue uh, which color tint is jolly good for that because it's very simple so this, this is going to be ice I will probably put the colour tint to blue. And uh, the great thing about having it like this is when these sections are inactive, uh, then I can run this as many times and have a, uh, and I can look at what I get. It's very quick as well, far quicker than, a, than adjusting layers in Photoshop. So there we go. It's that quick. And that's produced a uh, image to image reference that should produce an icy planet. <laughs> Famous last words. Now I'm trying it while talking to the talking to the screen at the same time. It won't do it. So we'll, we'll set this group to always and cue the prompt. And here we are back again. And I forgot to change the prompt. <laughs> Never mind. I got an icy icy moon quite unintentionally. So yeah, you can see from the prompt here, it uh, it should have said icy planet, but. Uh, 
in the in the heat at the moment I've forgotten we've got an icy moon instead but you get an idea of um, how good the result is so and that's just from this image here the denoise is only 50 so it's it's you know it's not very strong you can mess with that obviously and there's a few things in the negative uh, you want to sign it of course uh, it also wants to put in asteroids and meteoroids absolutely everywhere so I have to prompt against that there is one Laura in here which is uh, NV Liminal I don't know how to pronounce it Liminal yes and um, and, and that works as a sort of smoother offer it it, 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 re it refines the surface which is quite nice now this is going into an illustration so I have one more refiner which is up here so this image is going in as as uh, a latent from this cus from this sampler so it's going straight into the latent there and we'll just put this to always and uh, shall I put an icy moon and this is the prompt for this which has a little bit more description about the quality of the picture so this is producing the base image and this is producing the style image that I uh, I want um, so it's got more about how I want to picture the bee and it has a uh, a very good uh, Laura Elrich digital art which I like the feel of the image I don't like things to be too photographic and I find that that particular Laura has a nice balance between realism and uh, finish that is and it's not too photographic I find photographic stuff boring actually so I, I love photographs but uh, fake photographs don't do anything for me at all so we'll run that and uh, oh, a few more things on this that are useful the denoise is set quite low at 3.5 you can go lower than that at above that it tends to become too stylized for me uh, but uh, that would very much depend on what you wanted to, to do so we'll prompt that one and see what we get and here it is back and isn't it nice we uh i don't mind some of the i don't mind the uh dramatic craters i think they're, they're quite nice on this one uh you can all change this seed as many times as you want to uh to get variations every seed will produce a, a very similar image and give you variations and then you can you can edit your your favorite features uh together and you can, of course, you can even mix these two together as well. So uh, they produce quite a different image. On the hand, for, for my illustration, I feel that is is much more the thing. And what I will do is, uh, I'm probably going for an icy planet <laughs> rather than an icy moon. But never mind, this is, this is fine for demonstration purposes. I would probably do 10 or so iterations uh, on different seeds. They all lay over each other and drop into each other in Photoshop. So you, you, you have real control over the image. So I'll, what I'll go do now is show you some of the varied, many varied planets I produced while experimenting. These, these results probably will never, ever get a spaceship flying over them, but never mind. Right, here we are in planet land. Uh, these are in no particular order. So here's a, a, a green verdant planet and a marsy rocky moony planet and almost a standard moon this is what i'm actually trying to make which is an icy planet so a variant on this will be my final image i think so this will be the the background to my final image there's a couple of variations on it there this is another one and some of the mixing planets I used were quite rough. And this one, I don't know what happened to this planet, but it's quite a nice planet. I particularly like the red, the red sort of rim it put around the edge of it there. And here we are. It will do standard, um, standard planets as well. And there's cloudy planet, another rough moony planet, and a rough asteroid. And this was using uh, uh, some texture balls that were of uh, rock and uh, and so forth. Which, uh, which actually translated really well. I'm going to see if the technique can be used to make the spaceship as well. I wasn't going to do this part of the video, but it looks like I am anyway. Uh, so I thought I'd try the same technique on the spaceship as I did on the planet. So um, that results in uh, this rather strange setup. So as with the planet, the texture of the spaceship is set here and I can mix these two images together in any way I want, which is fine. <laughs> it, it is quite hard, by the way, to uh, prompt for a spaceship just flying through empty space. You have a go. It's very reluctant. The, uh, the AI really doesn't like areas of the picture where there's no stuff and will just put stuff in it. Even if you want a lonely spaceship flying through, through the stars, it's, uh, it's going to be very reluctant to give you that. So uh, you can see these images are almost just random cut out bits and pieces. Load another one to show how crazy some of them are. That's, uh, that's a bit of a Mercedes uh, racing engine. <laughs> um, 
What should we have? Another mad one? That one there. That that uh, that one there is a is a bit of a is a bit of a uh, an organ, a huge organ in Germany somewhere in Dresden, I think. So two really unlikely images, <laughs> and then we have the star background. But included in this, we also have the uh, vapor trail from the ship, and everywhere that is ship is black. So this is going on in a layer that is lightening things. So nothing will happen in that area. Next stage, the layout here is the same. I moved the colour tint back here because I didn't want it to affect the stars. And then I have the actual line work structure of the ship. So this is going where our, our planet shadow was and it gives structure to the, uh, to the eventual image. So I haven't run that one. So let's see what this looks like. There we go. So there's our com composite image. Now I think I might want a little bit more of our motor, which is this one, image two. So we can go up to 67 there. There we are, we have a bit, a bit more of our motor. So we've got this really strange image. So if we uh, make this lot active, you can see I did a previous rust, rusty spaceship. I know spaceships can't get rusty in space, but who cares? I like the idea. Well, it gets rusty when it's on the on the planet, doesn't it? And they don't bother to clean it. That's plainly why we get rusty spaceships. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's... Uh, we, should we stay battered and rusty? Yeah, I don't think so. We'll say battered, because rusty is just going to make it go orange. So, a battered spaceship. So here we are, let's run. And here's our slightly junky spaceship. And then that goes on to the next stage, which is the refiner, which I shall put here. This layer is uh, doing the styling. So I'm using uh, Eldritch and so on. I, I, I think I've gone over this before in the earlier part. But um, so we will run this and it'll hopefully tidy up our uh, chatty spaceship there a little bit. Right, so here's that back. Uh, let's put the two side by side and we can see what's happened. So this is the, the refined one. So you see everything is a little bit more uh, intricate and uh, defined. And you see the, the blast there is more interesting. I, I don't like what it does to the starry backgrounds. I shall probably use the starry background from one of these, which are nicer. But uh, this has just generally refined the whole image. And it's still quite tatty and battered. So the final part is the scaling and, and that has some refining built into it as well. So we'll, we'll go up to this last module here, which I do always. So here we have the upscale and it's doing some refining as well. So we've got uh, a, a style Laura in here at quite a low level. Uh, we've got uh, rescale CFG, which is a new thing, which uh, I find uh, gives a, a uh, a, a distinct improvement to generations in quality in the quality and uh, finish of things and then we go into a latent upscale so we're upscaling by 1.5 uh, we have a denoise of 0.4 so it, it's quite a change still we'll keep battered and uh, get rid of rusty and we're doing junk world again because that's appropriate i think and this will upscale to the important thing with an upscale if you find your ordinary decoder and do it you have to use a tiled decode there are there is a sort of ultimate upscale thing which i really hate uh it doesn't do a very good job either you know i'd like it if it did a good job but doesn't it sort of it sort of smooths everything off horribly uh so i prefer the the, the really simple basic one this adds up to the ultimate re rescaler essentially but i can control all the bits and pieces of it so i prefer that so we'll cue that prompt so here we are back and here is our upscale which as you see is very nice detail even all the glow and heat inside the uh, it's done unpleasant things to the starry background <laughs> and that's the price you pay and that'll get worse when i upscale again but the ship will get better it, it's it's never really possible to produce uh, a really good image um, in one go. So we'll do the final upscale, which is really only for the ship. I mean, all of this is only for the ship, the background. It has actually produced some nice starry backgrounds, which I might well use. But the, the great thing about this method is that any ship will fit with any planet and any starry background. I mean, this starry background I really like, really nice starry background. This is the last upscale, so this is, you can see how, how that's upscale. So we run the upscale, this is just a simple upscale, res ergon two times, just uh, just upscale my model. Uh, it, it does tend to sharpen things, so these rays on the sun will go horrible, I assure you. There we go. 
Look at those. Aren't they nasty? However, our ship has taken another step forwards. It is now very beaten up and tattered. I could, of course, put any of these ships back through the mill again, because they'll all fit. And that, with a few more of these, I have all of the uh, materials. Put the whole image together, and that's what we'll look at next. Right, so here we are in uh, Photoshop and uh, here is our one arrangement of our images and clone that with that. Everything, anything from any image will fit into any other image. So I can, if I want my ship a bit nearer, we can swap trips. That's another rusty one. Or we could have one of the smooth ones. That's another one. Doesn't really go colour-wise, that one. It's a nice slick one with a rough asteroid. So as you see, every single ship will fit with every single planet. And uh, I, uh, my final one is uh, slightly more tasteful. This is what I set on finally, which was my original intention, which is a sort of, uh, I don't know, feels, wanted it to feel quiet, but I wanted it to feel sort of, um, have a sort of silence about it, like you, you couldn't hear the uh, rockets going and so forth. Okay, so that's the whole process from start to finish, which I didn't intend to do, but uh, we've done it. Okay, so uh, we'll zoom in on that a bit. Oh, I'm trying to zoom like I'm in company. There we go. So as you say, we are pretty good. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope, uh, I hope that's of use to someone.